Welcome to the Accounting for You podcast, brought to you by the accounting firm of Adkins and Reynolds CPAs. This podcast is designed to provide relevant tax and accounting information to help you and your business succeed. If you enjoy listening in, please like and subscribe to our channel. Now, on to the show. All right, well, welcome back to the Accounting for You podcast. If you stayed with us this long, we are in episode number three. Hard to believe it's already episode number three. It is hard to believe. (laughs) <laughs> Episode three of very many to come. So there you go. Absolutely. All right. So here we are at the first of the new year. Everything's new. Everything's fresh. Everybody's done their New Year's resolutions. If you don't do resolutions, maybe you've done some real goal planning. Um, but you know that your business books have always been a mess, and especially when it comes to your cash and cash is the lifeblood of any organization. And it's very important to keep track of your cash because if you don't keep track of your cash, then your books are going to be dirty and not clean and you know things are going to be a mess. But if you don't have cash, you can't pay your rent. You can't pay your payroll. You can't pay those expenses that are coming up. You're not going to keep the lights on and you're going to soon go out of business. So Today, we want to talk a little bit about how to keep a hold of your cash because I can't tell you, and Jay, I'm sure you've heard this before, hey, my business is always short right around payroll time or when the rent's due. Do you have that ever happen? Absolutely. We hear it all (laughs) the time, and planning for your cash is critical to any business, and we're going to talk about today in this podcast uh, a document that will help you in planning for your cash throughout the year. Yeah. So we've got, we've heard a lot of people say things like, you know, hey, you know, we always seem to be starved for cash or, you know, every time payroll comes up, we're having a hard time making the payroll and we hate borrowing. So we don't know what to do. We're making plenty of money, we think. So we just don't understand what the problem is. Or other things I've heard is, you know, those big one time a year expenses come in, you know, insurance premiums maybe come in once a year and people don't have the cash to pay for that because, hey, they forgot that you know that comes around every every year so we've got a tool and we've kind of come up with it we call it here internally is our cash tracker um you could call it whatever you want we're going to call it for the cash tracker just for purposes of this show to to help us but the basic idea is it's a cash planning tool to help you forecast cash flow and i think once you have something like this implemented, you can really see how it will, you know, benefit you and will also, uh, you know, help you, uh, you know, maybe iron out some of those bumps that you know are going to come and, and things like that. So, I mean, I don't know. I think we've done this maybe for two years here. We implemented yes. it a couple of years ago and it's really helped our operations. Um, I know it makes me feel maybe more comfortable about you know, cash situations and things. So, I mean, do you got anything to add on to that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, We have the cash tracker, as Chris said, that normally is eight weeks out, uh, that we have all known expenses set up on it, and we review it multiple times a week uh, because as you have with any plan, you have the plan, and then there's constantly changes to the plan because you you never know when cash is coming in for the most part. Um, and expenses, you have standard expenses, you know, your payroll, your insurance, other things that Chris has mentioned that you have. And then, you know, there's the occasional bill that comes in that you don't know exactly what time that is. But if you have the cash tracker and you review it on a regular basis, it will really help you as far as keeping your cash in good standing. Yeah. So we'll kind of go through, uh, kind of an idea of how to maybe get it set up. We don't want to completely geek out on you here and go to Excel boot camp or anything on how to set up your rows and your columns and everything in your spreadsheet, but give you a general idea. Obviously, if you have questions about it, you can call our offices. We'll be more than happy to help you out with it. Uh, Or maybe we could even uh, get a get a copy and maybe send you over a uh, maybe a blank spreadsheet or something like that to help you get you set up because we really believe that this is uh, you know a vital thing for businesses to do and uh, I've heard other organizations having similar things but of course I think ours is the best so absolutely that's just the way life goes so all right without further ado let's let's talk about this this tool here um, so again we keep it on a spreadsheet you can keep it um, manually if you want um, I don't know too many people using the old green bar column or pay, pages too much anymore <laughs> we maybe do occasionally because we're accountants but um, 
this is a you know document in Excel or something or a similar spreadsheet, that, but it's got to be somewhere where you can get to it. Okay, I know that seems really silly, but if you can't access it easily, you're not going to do it. And if you're going to make the spreadsheet overly complicated and too many steps to actually do the spreadsheet and keep it up to date, you're not going to keep it up to date. So the old KISS principle, keep it simple, Student, we'll go with. Um, but keep it simple. That's the important thing uh, because if you get too high level, you're you're not going to keep up with it. So, so what we've got is a um, a spreadsheet set up with uh, our columns, and we set each column to be a week. Uh, I think we use Wednesdays just as a general rule of thumb because that gives us seven days, and it's right in the middle of the week. Maybe you could use Fridays, Mondays, whatever. Maybe a significant date in your calendar might be. Um, and then each row that we have in there would start with like your beginning cash of where, where you are today. And it will add in your, you know, current revenues streams that are coming in that week. So maybe if you know you're going to have cash coming in, a check's being deposited, whatnot, you, you know, you put those in there. And then in the future weeks, maybe if you have recurring income, subscription income, uh, you would get a rent check on the first of every month from a, from a, you know, a client or something. You know, you can go ahead and plot those in because, you know, you know, those are pretty well secure, especially if you've got agreements and, and, and the like. And then down below that, you're going to be listing all your expenses. So, you know, you're going to be putting things that you know. You know you've got to pay your employees, you know, every two weeks, every week, every month, whatever your payroll schedule is. You know rent's going to happen if you're paying rent uh, at the end of the month or whenever you decide to pay your rent. Um, maybe you've got bank notes. Maybe you've got car payments. You've got mortgage payments. You're going to plot all of those known expenses in. And that way, you're getting a pretty good handle into your eight weeks out as to when your cash is going to come in and when your expenses are going to come out. And then kind of down at the bottom, you're going to have uh, maybe like cash left over, or basically a balance. And with those trends, you can kind of see where your cash is going. Is it going positive? Is it going negative? Hey, maybe in three weeks, you've got a big negative that you've got to maybe, you know, fill in. And we we don't like negatives. Do we, we don't like negatives. And one thing <laughs> when Chris talks about the negatives, if you do have a business that the revenue arrival is unknown and you have your cash tracker, don't panic if there's some negatives a few weeks out because that does happen at times. And we even have it too. Some of our revenue, we know when it's coming in. Other revenue, we don't. Uh, and that's a good reason to keep track of this and look at it you know, at least once a week uh, and then update it because as with any plan, they don't work out exactly like you plan a few weeks out that they will change. So it's something that's constantly changing. Yeah. So, and, and that's the more, most important thing is you've got to keep it updated. It, it If it's a stagnant spreadsheet, you know, it does, you know, it does, you know, good. So you've got to keep it updated um, and you got to, you know, make, make sure you do the work so it can work for you, let's say. Um, the other important thing is, um, you know, we're talking about things going negative, and, and you don't maybe, like you said, Jay said, you don't know when that revenue's coming. Now, there are schools of thought in this that maybe you plug in the revenue that you think you're going to get, and and that's that's okay. Uh, we choose to maybe go off of the, and maybe that's because we're accountants, but what's certain? You know, we if we have certain recurring income that happens on certain days of the month, we will go ahead and plot that in because we know that's maybe under a contract or something. But outside of that, we we operate under the school of thought of we want to see that negative so we know what we have to do uh, by that week or something to make to make things happen. Um, and then it gives us that time to maybe maneuver things around or uh, speed up projects or whatever you've got to do to make sure you're hitting your revenue marks because, you know, employees like to get paid. Right. You know, uh, we, we think they do at least. Absolutely. <laughs> we like to get paid. Everybody likes to get paid. Uh, we got to pay your rent. You know, you got to pay your mortgage. You've got to do all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's a very, very important. Um, all right. So, Again, start with your beginning cash, add in your revenues, however you want to do that. Uh, add in any credit cards, maybe if you're 
take credit cards that you know you're going to get in the next day or two, put in your expenses, and you want to plot this in for eight weeks. I would say eight weeks minimum. Um, I've heard some other people say they go up to 16 weeks. Um, I have ours set out to 16 weeks just because I like to see it way out there. That makes Jay nervous. He doesn't like to see the full 16 weeks. But I like <laughs> to see the full 16 weeks. Uh, but we normally just really work on the, the eight weeks because that's that's a foreseeable time amount, not too far in the future, that we can maybe plan better for. It seems more realistic as opposed to you know, a full 16 weeks out because a lot can change, obviously, that far out. And again, uh, in mentioning 16 weeks out and sometimes you're going to have negative numbers there, do not be too overly optimistic as far as revenue. If you don't know for sure uh, when it's coming in, I would not put it on the spreadsheet because that can lead to problems if, you know, it doesn't come in. Uh, we tend to be very conservative. Uh, we put all expenses that are known on there, but very conservative with the revenue. We put what we know we're getting at a certain time, and then we update as the remaining revenue comes in. So it is very conservative. Yeah, we like to be conservative with it because we don't want to have to maybe have that uh, realization <laughs> that, yeah, we way overestimated that income and have missed the mark. So because when you're, you're a business owner and you have employees and you've got, you know, commitments, you know, you've got a lot riding on the line. It's, it's not, it's not just a, you know, fun game, a hobby, you know, there, there's people, people's livelihoods are at stake here. So we, you know, we take it seriously and that's what this tool will help you do to make sure that, you know, you're looking out for those commitments. Um, so another big thing that we recommend and we, we currently do, uh, internally also is, uh, the old, uh, we call it our sinking funds. I think other people would maybe just call it a classified savings account. But we save each year, or I'm sorry, each month for big expenses that we know are going to come. So if we know our insurance comes due in October, we save all year long to make sure that we can pay our insurance bill. Likewise, we have you know software that comes due once a year. You know that we save for those big expense. You know those big expenses. So. Um, we set it up, I think, what it's on a monthly basis that we kind of make a make a transfer over into our quote-unquote sinking funds. And we actually will make sure that, you know, that we're plotting those into certain categories to make sure that we're saving for those expenses. So we'll, um, we'll have basically a payout on, a, on an expense. Maybe that expense is 12 months in advance. So we can divide that payment that we know or that total by 12 months. And so we save up over 12 months. Maybe it's only six months out, you know, the same principle applies to each one. Um, and you know, no expense is too large, too small, but especially these big recurring ones that come around because just like people at Christmas time, I can't believe Christmas happened again on December the 25th. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Th this is a wonderful, uh, measure to help with large expenses, especially. As Chris said, we do save throughout the year when the large expense comes up. We have the cash. Uh, it's very easy to pay bills when you have the cash there. And I know as business owners, you know, sometimes if you don't do the sinking funds and your cash starts to build up, it's very tempting to take some of that money that you might need later. If you put money in the sinking fund first and you have the large expenditures covered, then there's a great deal of comfort in knowing what level of cash that the business owner can take without putting yourself in a really tight cash position later on in the year. Yeah, and it, it kind of works yourself into where you've kind of becoming self-insured maybe against, you know, those big problems arising. Everybody gets bills that you weren't expecting. That's going to happen. That's called being in business. You're going to have those revenue hits through the year. You know that's going to happen. You can't predict that. So it's important if you've got this system, let's say, set up with a cash tracker and sinking funds, things going for you, you've got yourself self-insured against those maybe ups and downs that maybe you didn't see coming. Um, so, you know, we highly, highly recommend something like this for your, for your business. So. Absolutely. And then, you know, at, in saving for these other items, you know, as Chris mentioned, there may be times during the year where there's ups and downs and you may need a little extra cash and maybe even temporarily, if there's a cash crunch, 
you've at least got money on the side in those sinking funds that you could use versus short-term borrowing and paying interest if you have to. Right. But the important thing is, is this projection spreadsheet, it gives you the time to consider what's coming up. So you're not scrambling at the last minute. You're not scrambling on payday to come up with the money to pay employees. You're not scrambling at the last day of the month to pay the first of the month rent. It, it gives you some time. It gives you some peace of mind. So if you're interested in something like this, obviously, you know, we can, you know, maybe help you set one of these spreadsheets up, maybe send you a blank copy of, um, of a spreadsheet or, you know, a sinking funds type calculation type spreadsheet. Um, but this is another service, obviously, that we offer to clients here through our bookkeeping services that we could add into your packages services. That would benefit your, you know, would benefit your business. So if you are interested in something like that, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to us because we'd be more than happy to talk to you about either helping you get one set up or maybe taking it on for your business. I can tell you as a business owner using this, that it provides a great level of comfort to know that we are saving for these big expenses and don't have to worry for them, you know, over the next year. Uh, so I highly recommend it. We love working and using, working with and using the cash tracker. It does provide so much comfort. Yep. So, all right. Well, that's all we've got today for you. Remember, if you want more information or anything, you know how to get a hold of us. Uh, we're on the internet, arcpas.com and theaccountingpodcast.com. You can go to any of those uh, web addresses and find us. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for taking time today to listen to our podcast. We appreciate listeners like you and ask that if you enjoy what you hear, please like and subscribe to our channel to ensure you receive the latest episodes as soon as they come out. If you have any questions about the topic we discussed today or would like more information on becoming a client, please do not hesitate to contact our office by visiting arcpas.com or theaccountingpodcast.com.